If you hear of Boston, and immediately think of Mark Wahlberg, baked beans, or its sports culture, then sadly you don't know Boston all that well. Welcome to Schmancy, the place where we talk all things rich, exclusive, and fancy Schmancy. Our topic today is Boston, Massachusetts and its neighboring cities, one of the most booming metropolitan areas on the East Coast, as well as one of the most affluent. Otherwise known as Beantown, this charmingly compact city of 650,000 people is a part of a vast metropolis of 8.4 million, making the greater Boston area one of the most populous regions in the United States. Yes, there's big money here, and what better way for us to showcase the Boston area's wealth than by zooming in on some of its big money neighborhoods. So without further ado, here are the 11 most filthy rich neighborhoods in the Boston area. Number 1. Beacon Hill. This historic neighborhood in Boston proper is one of Boston's most picturesque, most Instagrammable, and one of the most charming places in the United States. The neighborhood not only looks old, but it actually is known as Boston's original old money neighborhood. Beacon Hill is where you'll find brick sidewalks, cobblestone alleys, gaslit lanterns, and rows of beautifully preserved federal-style row houses, dating back to the 18th and 19th century, as well as the Massachusetts State House. Bordering the public garden and Boston Common, the entire neighborhood exudes a timeless charm. With its tree-lined streets leading to quaint shops on Charles Street, cozy cafes, and hidden gardens, you have an intimate, village-like atmosphere within the bustling city. It's quite common for some of the most expensive row houses in Beacon Hill to sell for $18 million or more, while a three-bedroom condo will go for $4 million, and a two-bedroom apartment will rent for $5,500. Number 2. Back Bay. Another historic and affluent neighborhood, Back Bay is characterized by its grid-like layout, its tree-lined streets, and is famed for its rows of beautiful Victorian mansions, and brownstones with ornate facades. Built on reclaimed land in the Charles River Basin, the neighborhood seamlessly blends the old with the new, as it boasts its vintage 19th-century architecture alongside modern art galleries, upscale boutiques, and trendy dining establishments. Its centerpiece is the Serene Commonwealth Avenue, a pedestrian mall, displaying lush greenery, monuments, and benches. However, Back Bay's main attractions are undoubtedly Newbury and Boylston Streets. The bustling thoroughfares where you'll find all of the fancy schmancy commerce, as well as the renowned Boston Public Library. It's normal for a brownstone in Back Bay to cost upwards of $13 million, while a one-bedroom condo will sell for $1.5 million. Number 3. Charlestown. Yet another historic neighborhood, this one is known for its brick sidewalks, traditional architecture, and colonial charm. As the oldest neighborhood in Boston, Charlestown's history dates back centuries, evident in its well-preserved buildings and old taverns. Charlestown is also home to the USS Constitution, the world's oldest ship still afloat, as well as the Bunker Hill Monument, where the Battle of Bunker Hill was fought at the start of the American Revolution. Located on a peninsula north of the Charles River, the neighborhood offers breathtaking views of the Boston skyline, the Zakem Bridge, the harbor, as well as its own range of modern conveniences. A typical row house in Charlestown can go for $3 million, while a two-bedroom apartment will rent for $3,800. Number 4. The Waterfront. After the Big Dig project of the 90s and 2000s, the narrow strip that can be found hugging the edge of downtown Boston became fully integrated with the rest of the city, as it was no longer separated by a major highway. Today, the Boston waterfront is known as one of the city's most trendiest spots, as well as one of its most expensive. Stretching along the shores of Boston Harbor, the waterfront is characterized by its stunning skyline views, bustling piers that once served as pivotal trade centers during the city's colonial era, and a diverse array of cultural attractions, including the New England Aquarium. There are also the meticulously designed green spaces, art installations, and the harbor walk with its iconic views and historic sites. A two-bedroom apartment on Boston's waterfront will rent for $5,000, while a two-bedroom condo will sell for $3 million. Number 5. The Seaport District. Also known as the South Boston Waterfront, this is another recently revitalized neighborhood, resulting from the Big Dig. Located on the northeastern tip of South Boston, this rapidly developing area has gone from old industrial docks and abandoned warehouses into a thriving art scene, and a haven for upscale shops, trendy nightlife, converted lofts, sleek residential high-rises, glittery office buildings, and all sorts of modern architecture. In addition, its waterfront location offers unobstructed views of Boston Harbor, while the Boston Convention Center and the Institute of Contemporary Art has turned it into a thriving business and entertainment destination. 
you can expect a two-bedroom apartment in the Seaport District to rent for more than $5,000, while a luxury waterfront condo can cost upwards of $5 million. Number 6. Cambridge. Not a part of Boston at all, Cambridge is an intellectually charged smaller city located just across the Charles River from Boston. Home to two of the world's most prestigious universities, and several others, Cambridge has this unmistakable air of big academia and big innovation. And what usually comes hand in hand with big academia and big innovation? Big money. For you see, Cambridge is a place where 80% of its adults have a bachelor's degree, meaning there's very little room for poverty here. It is home to numerous established tech companies, mixed in with many smaller startups and an endless supply of biotech companies. The city itself is a blend of historic charm and modern vitality, with its numerous squares defining many of the neighborhoods. There's Kendall Square, Inman Square, Central Square, Harvard Square, and Porter Square, each with their own unique flavor. In addition to the urban squares there are spots such as West Cambridge where you'll find manicured lawns, quiet tree-lined streets, and old historic homes with a ton of suburban flair. Then there's the new construction. Lots and lots of it mixed in with the older structures, cool campus architecture, outstanding museums, and quintessential shops and cafes. A three-bedroom house in Cambridge will cost you on average, $2.5 million. While a two-bedroom apartment will rent for $3,500. Number 7. Brookline. Right next door to Boston, and directly across the water from Cambridge, is a town called Brookline. This affluent suburban enclave is known for its charming tree-lined streets, elegant historic homes, and the vibrant cultural scene. There are actually two faces to Brookline. One is about urban convenience and small-town charm. The other is of sprawling estates and country club pizzazz. Both extremely wealthy, with its proximity to prestigious institutions like Boston College, Boston University, and all the rest, Brookline boasts a highly educated population, fostering an extremely posh and extremely intellectual community. Some interesting personalities who have called Brookline home at one time or another are Tom Brady and his ex-wife Giselle, Frederick Law Olmsted, who designed Boston's Emerald Necklace, and Larry Bird. There's also Barbara Walters, JFK, RFK, and Conan O'Brien, for whom this actually was their hometown. A typical massive Brookline estate can cost you upwards of $10 million, while a two-bedroom condo will go for $2 million. Number 8. Newton. Right next door to Brookline, and just seven miles west of Boston, we'll come across Newton. Another extremely affluent suburban city. Renowned for its upper crusty vibe, this city of 74,000 boasts numerous villages, each with their own character. There will be a range of housing from the trendy condo, to your upper middle class historic home, to the extremely wealthy estate. Home to two highly acclaimed academic institutions, Newton is another one of those cities full of intellectuals, which, as we should know by now, can only mean one thing. Now, of course we can't talk about Newton, without mentioning Chestnut Hill. One of the most upscale parts of Newton, the village of Chestnut Hill is claimed by two other neighbors, Brookline and Boston, making it also belonging to three separate counties. It features tranquil leafy streets, elegant estates, the prestigious Boston College, luxury shopping destinations like the shops at Chestnut Hill, and contributes much to Newton's charm and character. A five-bedroom Victorian home in Newton will go for $3 million while a brand new modern villa will go for $5 million. Number 9. Wellesley. And just southwest of Newton is yet another affluent suburb. We're now in the town of Wellesley, Massachusetts. Renowned for its charming New England character as well as its money, Wellesley exudes charm, elegance, and history. Lined with tree-shaded streets and beautifully manicured lawns, the town boasts a mix of stately historic homes and more contemporary residences. Wellesley College, a prestigious women's institution right off of Lake Waban, graces the town with its drop-dead gorgeous campus and its cultural contributions. Famous alumni include Hillary Clinton, Diane Sawyer, and Madeleine Albright. There's also Babson College and the Massachusetts Bay Community College, making this another intellectually prominent town. Wellesley's downtown area has a blend of boutique shops, upscale restaurants, and cultural attractions. And with recreational amenities such as parks, botanical gardens, nature preserves, and golf courses, there's lots to do here. It's suburban living at its finest, attracting residents who appreciate its tranquility, beauty, and accessibility to urban conveniences. In Wellesley, a five-bedroom mansion with the works can cost you around $6 million, while a two-bedroom condo will go for $2.5 million. Number 10. Dover. 
We've now ventured even further out into the suburbs, into a town called Dover. Otherwise known as the richest town in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Dover offers a tranquil escape from the bustling city atmosphere of Boston. The town's spacious properties, often nestled among lush landscapes and wooded areas, contribute to its reputation as an exclusive residential enclave. Dover is characterized by its expansive estates, well-maintained historic homes, and a strong sense of community that values privacy and a close connection to nature. With no commuter rail, and barely a downtown area in this small town of 6,000, it could only mean one thing. And that is, if you don't live here, you're just gonna have to keep it moving. With a commitment to preserving its rural charm, Dover strikes a delicate balance between luxury, seclusion, and idyllic beauty. Average single-family mansions in Dover run at approximately $3.5 million. Last is number 11. Cohasset. Okay, let's head on down Massachusetts' south shore to the town of Cohasset, somewhat 20 miles south of Boston. This coastal town is known for its scenic beauty, including stunning beaches, quaint harbors, and lush landscapes. Cohasset's rich history is reflected in its well-preserved colonial architecture and iconic landmarks, such as the Cohasset Common, a historic village green that has been a gathering place for over three centuries, the historic Cohasset Harbor Lighthouse, and the multitude of colonial-era homes. Just so you know, there are hardly any apartments or condos here. Just homes. Though extremely wealthy, it's a very laid-back, very tight-knit community, with days at the beach, an adorable downtown, and boating as the town's main attractions. Why vacation at the Cape, when you can live in Cohasset, and make every day a vacation? Here, a starter home will cost you around $695,000. While the average oceanfront estate will set you back about $8 million. And that's it for the 11 richest neighborhoods in the Boston area. So which of these neighborhoods, did you like the most? Have you lived in any one of them and have direct experience? Okay, so before you come for us. We know there are quite a few places we didn't mention. If you know of some other well-to-do neighborhoods in the area, that could have possibly made this list, by all means, do tell us about it. Anyway, if there's anything else you would like to mention about this topic, feel free to share it with us in the comments below. Furthermore, if you got any value out of this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon so you never miss out on another video. With that said, we'd like to thank you for watching, and we'll see each other next time.